This week on Gadget, we're bringing you 64 gigabytes of solid state storage goodness from Samsung. Hello, and welcome back to Gadget at thetechstop.net, where it's always time to get your geek on. I'm your host, Father Robert Palliser of the Society of Jesus. That's the California province of the Jesuits. We're a religious order, the largest religious order of the Catholic Church, and we're here in the Center for Apostolic Technology in Honolulu, Hawaii. We're back in the office for uh, the Center of Apostolic Technology, even though the air conditioner is broken, so it is really, really hot in here right now, and uh, excuse me if I sweat. Now, we've got some geek wear this week. You may notice this. We brought back the geek work shirt because, well, honestly, uh, we might need it in this episode. This is uh, from ThinkGeek. So if you go to www.thinkgeek.com, you'll be able to check out this shirt as well as all of the other Uber Geek wear that you can buy to display your geek hood proudly. The Gadget Bite of the Week also comes to us from ThinkGeek. They sent us the ticks. This funky little clock isn't your standard analog or digital timepiece. It's for those who want to add a little flavor to their chronotological uh, experience. The idea is you can add up these numbers and you get the time. Now, the nice thing about this is it actually changes patterns. It uh, changes intensities. You can set the clock very easily through the little control panel in the back here. And uh, it's actually a nice addition for any geek. If, if you are looking for a way to tell time easily that requires you to use your brain a little bit more than usual, then you might want to check out the ticks at www.thinkgeek.com. The main event this week comes to us from Samsung, who sent us this. This is their 64 gigabyte solid state drive. It's a flash memory device that uh, it comes packaged in this 2.5 inch form factor and can come in either a PADA or a SATA interface. They've sent us the SATA interface because they wanted us to experience the highest performance that was possible out of one of these units. The SSD uses Samsung's NAND flash memory technology, which they claim has been optimized for random read, significantly increasing real-world transfer rates. Samsung sent us the 64GB version of the drive, but they're also available in capacities ranging from 16 to 64GB. Samsung makes their SSDs with PADA and SATA interfaces, and 2.5 and 1.8 form factors as well as a specialized 1-inch module for ultra notebooks and embedded applications. Weighing only 73 grams, these drives are as little as 15% the weight of a comparable 2.5-inch hard drive, but that doesn't mean that they're flimsy. The SSD is encased in an aluminum shell to protect it from moisture or physical intrusion. The SSD features a SATA 2 interface for up to 3 gigabits per second transfer, and a theoretical max transfer rate of 100 megabytes per second read and 80 megabytes per second write. Because of the aforementioned memory optimization, Samsung claims that they can get very close to that theoretical maximum transfer rate. Our testing methodology was simple. We put identical bare installations of Windows Vista on two drives, a Toshiba 5400 RPM laptop drive with a 16 megabyte buffer, and the Samsung SSD. We then ran the same suite of tests on both drives using a combination of PC Mark Vantage and a few real-world measurements. The Vantage results are clear and dramatic. The Samsung SSD trounced the Toshiba drive in every performance benchmark by 700% in one case. Access times of the hard drive hovered near 12 milliseconds, while the Samsung drive measured under a millisecond. We knew that some would point out that we ran our tests against a 5400 RPM drive, so we decided to put the Samsung SSD against a 10,000 RPM desktop drive, the Western Digital WD1500 Raptor X one of the fastest drives on the desktop. While the Raptor X does a great job of closing the performance gap and actually outperforms the SSD in two benchmarks, the overall performance advantage goes to the SSD. We contacted Samsung about those two benchmarks, and they mentioned that it is most probably the result of the way that Vista handles write-back caching, especially in media applications, and that this could be fixed by turning off that caching. In real-world testing, the SSD beat the hard drive in Vista startup time, real application loading, and just about every other comparison that we could find. There is no doubt that this is one seriously high-powered unit. 
While the performance aspects of the Samsung SSD cannot be understated, that is but a fraction of the benefits offered by using a solid-state drive. First of all, this drive is tough. Whereas most hard disk drives are rated to withstand 300 Gs of shock, the Samsung SSD can take 1500 Gs and shrug off the hit. While operating, a hard disk drive can be damaged with as little as half a G of continuous vibration. The SSD will work all the way up to 20 Gs. While notebook hard drives have become much more reliable over the last few years, with many boasting 5 to 700,000 mean time between failure hours, the SSD trumps them all with an MTBF approaching 2.5 million hours. No moving parts means that your data is safer for a much longer time. The SSD can also operate in temperatures that would freeze or cook a traditional hard disk drive. The SSD will work in the 110 Celsius range between minus 25 and 85. A hard disk drive will freeze up at 5 degrees Celsius and melt itself at 55. Power-wise, the Samsung SSD uses 1 watt when active, 1 tenth of a watt when idle, and 1 twentieth of a watt when in standby. Even a power-efficient 5400 RPM laptop drive will use about 2.1 watts in operation, 1.5 watts at idle, and 0.2 watts in standby. While the hard drive is not the most power-hungry device in a laptop, our test showed that the SSD would add between 15 to 30 minutes of operation to a notebook under typical usage conditions. As a further note, our desktop Raptor X uses 10 watts while active, 9 watts at idle, and 2.6 watts on standby. Waste heat generation is another area in which the SSD excels. Put side by side with a 5400 RPM drive, the Samsung SSD was always cooler. With an ambient temperature in our office of 84 degrees, the hard disk drive operated at about 95 to 100. The Samsung SSD stayed at the ambient temperature. The 10,000 RPM Raptor ran at about 119 degrees. When installed into the laptop, this heat difference was made even more pronounced as the hard disk drive pushed the palm rest to 99 degrees, while the SDD barely affected the temperature of the notebook at all. While 10 to 15 degrees may not seem like a big deal, anybody who has had to use a laptop for an extended period of time knows how uncomfortable a hot laptop can become. Furthermore, this test was done with a 5400 RPM hard drive. The faster 7200 RPM drives generate quite a bit more of waste heat. Finally, for those who are truly discerning about their computer experience, there is one more advantage to the SSD. Noise. Or rather, silence. The SSD makes no noise. Ever. Not on startup. Not while in operation. Not while being accessed. It's hard to get really excited about storage. I mean, storage is important. Everybody knows that storage is something that we need, something that we use all the time, but uh, it's not as sexy as some other technologies. The SSD kind of changes that because it gives us a unit that is incredibly fast, that is incredibly sexy, that is so light, that is thermally and electrically efficient. No matter what metric you throw at this thing, it compares favorably against the rotating media brethren. Now, of course, there's the price, and that is the only negative. I mean, if this was the same price as a similar capacity hard disk drive, there'd be no contest. Everyone would go with this, but of course it's not. Right now, if you were to take this 1330 on the Dell website and configure it with one of these 64 gigabyte SSDs, it would add $1,000 to your total price. Now, that's almost double the price of the notebook. I mean, it, it's hard to justify that unless you're looking for that extra edge, unless you need every bit of battery time, unless you need something that's durable, that can't be vibrated to death, that uh, has the performance that you would need to do some serious transfer rates. Now, that being said, I can see a future where we start to see more of these. As the price goes down, as this becomes more plentiful, as we start to see more SSD devices, I'm sure these, these are going to start showing up in servers and desktops. Especially in the server market, when you consider that when you have these huge server farms, these network operation centers, heat is the primary enemy. And a lot of that heat comes not necessarily from processors, but from hard drives. Those 10,000 RPM hard drives put out tons and tons of heat, which have to be removed. A row of SSDs could actually pay for themselves, even at this super high premium, within a year. And considering the fact that they're far more durable since there are no mo moving parts, um, it could be a good option for those who are running those huge server farms. 
I'm sure also that we'll start to see it at the consumer level once these drop down into the four and maybe three hundred dollar range. Right now it is fiscally unfeasible to have one in your whole machine, but again, that's not going to last. That's all the time we have for this episode of Gadget. If you want to find out more about the Samsung SSD, you can go to our website at www.thetechstop.net. Click on the Gadget tab and you'll be able to find links to reviews of the SSD and pics and uh, our own personal little write-up. If you want to send us an email message, you can write us at gadget at thetechstop.net. Well, I've been your host, Father Robert Balasser. This has been the Center for Apostolic Technology, and I'm here to remind you that there's no Uber geek without you.